ready to get back into our Father's Word here at the chapel, the Law, the Book of Numbers, the fourth book of Moses. And we have going on, as we left off in our last lecture, we're going to pick it up today, chapter 2, verse 14, if you care to be opening your Bible there. And we have the establishment of the camps of Israel, which you can think of as the four divisions of the military. And where we left off, we had established the first camp of Judah, uh, Judah uh, being joined with the uh, tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun. And then we started to develop the camp of Reuben. Uh, Reuben would be joined by Simeon and Gad. And uh, everything in this now, remember, it wasn't uh, Moses just saying, okay, we're going to do it this, this, and that way. These were God's instructions to Moses and Aaron, and this is how he ex expected the nation to be established, and it was all by his design, organized and disciplined, if they had done things God's way. And things are rocking along pretty good as we, as we get into the second chapter of Numbers. Let's ask that word of wisdom in Yeshua's name, Father, we ask you to open eyes, open ears this day. Uh, we're going to pick it up today, chapter 2, verse 14, uh, in continuing in uh, building the camp of Reuben. Then the tribe of Gad and the captain of the sons of Gad shall be Eliasaph, the son of Ruiel. Ruiel called Duiel in chapter 1, verse 14, and he'll be called Duiel again in chapter 10, verse 20. Uh, the letter R, Resh, and the letter D, Delith, in the Hebrew language are easily uh, confused, and this is thought to be a copyist error here. But Gad was to encamp, uh, the, the member of the tabernacle would be in the center, uh, which contained, you know, after all, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, which was the throne of God, if you will, while he was on earth. Uh, and this, uh, the southwest corner uh, between Manasseh and Reuben, verse 15. And his host, or his army, and those that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred and fifty. And Gad, uh, the, the sign in the zodiac, if you will, and I'm talking astronomy, not astrology, but the sign of Gad was Aries and was probably a ram or a lamb on the uh, flag that represented the tribe of Gad. But i remind you once again, though, when they went to war, uh, they were under the standard of Gad, Gad being the major tribe in that particular camp or division. So uh, uh, Gad and, and Simeon would have been under uh, the sign of Reuben, which was uh, uh, the man, verse 16. All that were numbered in the camp of Reuben were in hundred thousand and fifty and one thousand, a hundred and fifty one thousand four hundred and fifty, this being the cumulative armies of uh, Reuben, uh, Simeon, and Gad, throughout their armies, and they shall set forth in the second rank. And when we get to chapter 10, uh, verse 18, we'll see this order as God gives the command to move out from Mount Sinai. Uh, in chapter 10, verse 10, is the uh, end of the uh, habitation or the encampment of Israel out at Sinai. So when we get there, we'll see first, well, and actually not Judah, but who will move out first. Well, it'll be the Lord himself, as the Ark of the Covenant will always lead the way. God said, I'll lead you into the promised land. I'll go before you. And when that cloud, uh, when it was time to move out, uh, the cloud ascended and led Israel to the next place of encampment. When the cloud came down, Israel, Moses, and Aaron knew that that was where God said to encamp. So, and the order would be, as they departed the Ark of the Covenant, then the, the host of Judah, the armies of Judah, uh, which included Zebulun and Issachar, then the, the trumpets would sound by the priest, time for 
Reuben to move out along with Simeon and Gad. And then we're going to see that next it would be the Levites and the tabernacle, the remainder part of the tabernacle that would be in the middle uh, as they move out. Verse 17, Then the tabernacle of the congregation shall set forward with the camp of the Levites in the midst of the camp. Two divisions of the military, Judah and Reuben, uh, followed by the Levites and the tabernacle. As they encamp, so shall they set forward every man in his place uh, by their standards. And the sign of uh, Levi being Libra, uh, and the ancient, actually, uh, emblem of the tribe of Levi was uh, none other than the altar. Verse 18, On the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim. Here we have the third camp or division of the military. According to their armies, and the captain of the sons of Ephraim shall be Elishama, the son of Emihud. And this is on the west side uh, in the center, the west side of the tabernacle as they encamped. Ephraim uh, being Taurus, uh, the sign of that being the ox, and uh, Ephraim, the younger brother of the two, Manasseh being the older, but according to the blessings of Jacob in Genesis chapter 48, the older brother would always serve the younger. Manasseh would become great, but Ephraim would always be greater, the blessing of Jacob on Ephraim. Verse 19, and his host, that's referring to Ephraim's army, and those that were numbered of them were 40,500. Uh, Ephraim, again, the sign being the ox. Verse 20, and by him shall be the tribe of Manasseh, his own brother in, in ancient times. And the captain of the children of Manasseh shall be Gamaliel, the son of Pedazur. And then Manasseh's place of encampment with the tabernacle in the center would be on the southwest corner between Gad and Ephraim. And his host and those that were numbered of them were thirty and two thousand and two hundred. Manasseh also the sign of Taurus and the uh, flag would be that of the ox or bull, if you will. Uh, a, a bull ox, if you will, 22. Then the tribe of Benjamin, and the captain of the sons of Benjamin shall be Abidan, the son of Gideoni, and that's on the northwest corner uh, between uh, Asher and Ephraim. And his host and those that were numbered of them were thirty and five thousand and four hundred, and the sign of Benjamin. Benjamin, Gemini on the zodiac, uh, there it's thought that their flag possibly uh, the twins, 24. All that were numbered of the camp of Ephraim were in hundred thousand and eight thousand and an hundred throughout their armies, 108,100, the smallest of the camps by a considerable number. And they shall go forward in the third rank, Ephraim, Manasseh and Benjamin, uh, all in one form or another, descendants of Rachel, uh, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh being grandsons of Rachel, Benjamin, uh, of course, his mother was Rachel. Now, uh, so you notice I said the smallest number by far, that would change in the centuries to follow because uh, soon after the time of Solomon, uh, the ten tribes to the north uh, were headed by Ephraim because Ephraim was the largest of the northern tribes. So uh, small at this time, but uh, up would gain numbers uh, as the centuries rolled along. And now the fourth camp, 25, the standard of the camp of Dan shall be on the north side by their armies. And the captain of the children of Dan shall be Ahazer, the son of Amenashadai. And when we say the captain, you could think of this as the prince, if you will, of the tribe. And remember, these are the same uh, princes, uh, the heads of these tribes 
were selected by God himself, named by God himself in chapter 1, to assist Moses and Aaron in this first numbering, actually the second numbering God commanded, the first numbering here in the book of Numbers. Dan on the north center, um, and it, it, sometimes it's helpful for us to visualize, or it, it is helpful to me, I know, to be able to look at something and, and lay it out on paper. If you have companion Bible, uh, you're fortunate toward the end of the second chapter of Numbers, you'll find a diagram showing the location of these tribes that are mentioned here in relation to the tabernacle at the places of encampment. And that might be helpful for you to take a look at that uh, in your side studies. Now, the book of Dan, the, the tribe of Dan, I should say, uh, we have the sign of it being the, or the standard, the eagle. And uh, Dan, uh, uh, the eagle, by the way, replaced uh, the serpent, uh, that, which was the sign of Dan, in chapter 49, verse 17. So interesting to note that. But, so we've got Judah, the lion on the east of God's throne, uh, we have Ephraim, uh, the ox and the, or the calf, if you will, on the west of the tabernacle. Uh, Reuben, uh, the sign of that, the man on the uh, south of the tabernacle. And now Dan, uh, the sign of which the standard was the eagle on the north side of the tabernacle. And uh, Dan being the last to set forth. Uh, as Israel would move from place to place. I should say, yeah, that's correct. Dan would be the last following Judah, uh, then Reuben, uh, then uh, Ephraim, uh, followed by the Levites, actually, followed by Ephraim, and then Dan and his host uh, bringing up the rear. But you might think, you know, well, that would be uh, disgraceful to be the armies of Israel to protect them uh, being the last ones to go forward as they move forward. That's not the case. You know, uh, keep in mind that, that we're talking about elderly people. We're talking about women and children, their herds, all of this. Everything that they own, they're moving along with them as they go. And that would be a slow go is my point. And therefore, it would be very important that you had good protection at the rear of this troop because your enemies, a lot of them, would be overcoming you with speed. So uh, not uh, by any means a, a uh, cut to the tribe of Dan to have their armies be the last to move out. Verse 26, And his host, or the armies, of those that were numbered of them were threescore and two thousand and seven hundred Dan Again, Scorpio uh, being the zodiac sign and the eagle being the standard. 27. And those that encamp by him shall be the tribe of Asher. And the captain of the children of Asher shall be Pegiel, uh, the son of Akram. This on the northwest corner uh, between Benjamin and Dan, the place of encampment. 28. And his host and those that were numbered of them were forty and one thousand and five hundred. The sign of Asher, um, the zodiac Sagittarius, uh, the flag would be the uh, uh, design of an archer. Twenty nine. Then the tribe of Naphtali and the captain of the children of Naphtali shall be Ahira, the son of Enan. This on the northeast corner. Uh, between Issachar and Dan, 30, and his host, and those that were numbered of them were 50 and 3,400. Naphtali, the sign on the zodiac, uh, Capricornus, and uh, that uh, the flag would have been the goat, 31. All they, and I'll mention uh, uh, Appendix 12, in your companion Bible if you are not comfortable with the discussion of the zodiac in relation to God. You know, God put the stars in the heavens for signs and seasons. Uh, check out that Appendix 12 in your companion Bible. And I'm sorry I began 31 
verse 31, and then have that thought. We'll go back and start 31. All they that were numbered in the camp of Dan were in hundred thousand and fifty and seven thousand and six hundred. They shall go hindmost with their standards. Again, bringing up the rear and the total army of Dan, Asher, and Naphtali, 157,600. Verse 32, These are those which were numbered of the children of Israel uh, by the house of their fathers. All those that were numbered of the camps throughout their host were 600 thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty six hundred and three thousand five hundred and fifty and I mentioned at the beginning of this chapter that uh, Ezekiel the prophet witnessed the throne of God coming to earth earth and protected by those four living creatures and at this time if you would turn with me to Revelation uh, chapter 4 I want to cover a couple of verses because uh, Ezekiel wasn't the only one to get a peek at the throne of God. And I know many of you someday will get to uh, view the throne of God. I look forward to that day. But John, in chapter 4 of Revelation, I'm going to pick this up. I think you'll have it on your monitor, chapter 4 of Revelation. What we have there is John is taken in, in the Spirit to uh, the, the throne of God. And this is what he sees as he reports in, in verse 6. And before the throne there was a sea of glass. This is the throne of God we're talking about. A sea of glass like unto crystal. Uh, glass and, and crystal always a sign of purity. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Notice they are surrounding the throne of God. Just as the uh, tribes of Israel, the four majors, Judah, Reuben, uh, Dan, and, and uh, Ephraim, were spotted in the four corners around the throne of God as it appeared on the earth in the Ark of the Covenant. So, and what were their faces like? Verse 7. And the first beast was like a lion. Remember what the flag of Judah was? On the east side of the temple, we have Judah, the lion, and the second beast like a calf. Here we have a young ox, uh, the sign of Ephraim, on the west side of the throne. And the third beast had a face as a man, Reuben, on the south side of the throne of God, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, the sign of the tribe of Dan, uh, which was assigned to the north side of the temple. So we have the throne of God in Ezekiel coming to earth. We have John taken in the spirit to God's throne in heaven in the future. And we see this just like God set it up on earth with the tribes of Israel surrounding the tabernacle with these different signs and faces. I think uh, those of you who do get to witness the throne of God at some point in the future are going to see something that resembles this of the man, the sign of the uh, lion of Judah, the man of Reuben, uh, the, uh, uh, the calf or ox of Ephraim, and the eagle of Dan protecting the throne of God. Verse 8, And the four beasts had each of them six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. God the Almighty forever and forevermore as well. So, um, is that exactly the way it's going to be? No, it's, it's not stated as such, but I have a feeling, with, based on our study here in the book of Numbers to this point, and based on not just one, but two witnesses, the first by Ezekiel, the second by John in the book of Revelation, 
that this is going to be how it is in the eternity as well. So 603,550 battle-ready troops. Um, are they brave soldiers? Well, unfortunately, when we get to chapter uh, thir chapters 13 and 14, we're going to see that not all of them uh, were all that brave. Interesting maybe to note the divisions, uh, the total number of the divisions, Judah, a total of 186,400, by far uh, the largest troop. Uh, Reuben, uh, the total armies, 151,450. Ephraim, 108,100, by far the smallest uh, camp. And Dan, uh, the fourth division of the military, 157,600. And so I don't confuse you when I mention that tribe. You've got to keep in mind that doesn't include just Judah, for example. That includes Judah, uh, Naphtali, and uh, Zebulun, if you excuse me, um, Judah, uh, Issachar, and Zebulun. Naphtali, of course, we just read in the tribe or the camp of Dan. And where did we get to? Let's go with verse 33. But the Levites were not numbered among the children of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses. And we'll see why as we get into chapter 3 and 4. I'll save that for then. But they most certainly, the Levites, were a part of God's army as well, a spiritual army, if you will. 34. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So far, so good. Unfortunately, it won't continue. It usually doesn't when man is concerned. And I don't mean to belittle the children of Israel for not following God's instructions. We don't do a very good job of it today either. So they pitched by their standards, and so they set forward, every one after their families, according to the house of their fathers. And in chapter 3, we're going to have the Levites uh, numbered or mustered. Um, actually, we're going to have two counts of the Levites. In chapter 3, we'll see that the people, the Levites, were numbered from the age of one month old and upward, uh, in chapter uh, 4, we'll see that they're numbered from the age of 30 to 50. Uh, the reason for the, the numbering of one month old and upward is that God is about to take the Levites to serve in, at his tabernacle as opposed to the firstborn males of Israel. Because in Exodus... Uh, chapter 11, 12, and 13. Chapter 11, we have uh, the death angel passing over and killing the firstborn of Egypt. Man, woman, uh, animal, uh, those from Pharaoh all the way to those in prison and to the animals in the field. The firstborn died as that death angel passed over. God redeemed, or sh I should say he claimed at that time, Exodus chapter 13, I think, covers this very well. But he claimed the firstborn male of the children of Israel at that time uh, to serve in his sanctuary. Now, at the age of one month old, the parents had a choice. They could either dedicate the child uh, to the service of the temple, in which case they would leave the child at the tabernacle, or they could redeem uh, the uh, child for five shekels of silver, that being uh, the amount uh, that a, a male child uh, was to be redeemed at as established in the book of Leviticus. So with that, uh, let's get on with the numbering of the Levites, chapter 3. These are the generations, or the, the pedigree, the family, if you will, descendants of Aaron and Moses in the day that the Lord spake with Moses in Mount Sinai. And here Moses and Aaron, I think, are put for all of the Levites as they had been raised up at this time as spiritual leaders. Uh, Moses as the leader of the nation and Aaron as the high priest uh, to represent the Levites. And they were uh, actually Moses and Aaron were of the tribe of Levi, uh, the, the Kohathites, the family. Verse 3, or 2, And these are the names of the sons of Aaron, 
Nadab, which means liberal, the firstborn, and Abihu, uh, Abihu uh, meaning uh, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Now, you may recall, or I should say in chapter 10 of Leviticus, you may recall what happened with Nadab and Abihu, the older sons of Aaron. And in chapter 9 of, of Leviticus and 8, we had the consecration of the priest. And in chapter 9, they laid out the offering on the altar. And I mean, bam, fire came down from heaven and consumed the offering. And I mean, the Levites and the people of Israel were celebrating and having a big time with all of this that was coming taken to place. And then what happened in chapter 10 of Leviticus? Well, Nadab and Abihu, uh, in their rush uh, to uh, uh, make up their own religion, and, and that's what Leviticus was all about, you see, was God telling the people, this is how you will worship me. And what happened? Nadab and Abihu got to play in church. I think they got caught up in the moment of being consecrated as priests, and they went and grabbed some strange fire. I think probably uh, camel chips uh, fire off the, the cook stove and ran and pulled it in the censers to worship God with it rather than fire from the altar. And God struck them dead. I mean, deader than a doornail right there. And they started, uh, Aaron started to complain about it and mourn. And Moses said, don't you dare. Either you or your sons mourn what happened to Nadab and Abihu or you're next. And that probably would have been the case. But the priesthood is going to rest with Eleazar and Ithamar due to that. Verse 3, These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priest, which were anointed, whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. And again, that recorded in Leviticus chapter 8 and 9. <clears throat> 4, and Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord when they offered strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. And they had no children. And Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron their father. And this last phrase, in the sight of Aaron their father, meaning that they were the only other consecrated priest during the life of Aaron is what that particular phrase means. Five, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse six, bring the tribe of Levi near and present them before Aaron the priest that they may minister unto him. And the children of Moses, by the way, were uh, of the, the Moses' wife Zipporah, uh, his son's names, the sons of Moses, were Gershom and Eliezer, uh, which is recorded in Exodus chapter 2, uh, verse 22, and also Exodus chapter 18, uh, verse 3 and 4. Verse 7, And they shall keep his charge, and the charge of the whole congregation, before the tabernacle of the congregation, to do the service of the tabernacle. A lot of work to be done in and around the tabernacle, and the work is about to be assigned out as they number uh, the Levites. Verse 8, And they, the Levites, shall all be, um, well, shall keep all the instruments, this being the vessels and the furniture, of the tabernacle of the congregation and the charge of the children of Israel to do the service of the tabernacle, everything uh, binding the Levites to the service of the uh, uh, tabernacle. Verse 9, And thou shalt give the Levites unto Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel of Israel. And this word uh, given here, uh, and actually this holy given is emphatic. In, in the Hebrew, it's actually uh, given, given, if you go back to the manuscripts, and for emphasis twice. Now, 
The word given in the Hebrew language is nethanim, now not to be confused with the nethanim of Joshua chapter 9, verse 27, where uh, the Gideonites, uh, some people who were conquered by Israel, were given to the Levites to cut wood and haul water. Uh, those particular given nethanim uh, worked their way in eventually over the years to the point that when uh, Ezra was coming back uh, from Babylon to Ju Jerusalem to rebuild the temple, he took count of how many uh, priests did he actually have. And he looked around, and they had no priest. All he had was nethanim. And what happened was the priest got so lazy, and the nethanim, they started out cutting wood and hauling water all right, but it got to where they liked the looks of those religious robes. And more and more, they took over the responsibilities of the priest, which evidently the priests were lazy enough to let, allow them to do, to the point they basically took over the priesthood. I'm sure that didn't please God at all. Verse 10, And thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall wait on their priest office, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. In other words, someone who wasn't of the, the tribe of Levi, or in some cases wasn't a, a, a priest of Aaron, if you will, they would be put to death by God. More on that as we get to the assignments of the various Levites over the next couple of chapters. Verse 11, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, now verse 11 through 51, well, we're going to see the Levites substituted uh, for the firstborn of Israel in the service of the tabernacle. Verse 12, And I, and this is the Lord speaking, Behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix. This matrix in the Hebrew is rechem, and it is the womb. Among the children of Israel, therefore the Levites shall be mine, God claiming them to do the service of the tabernacle. And why did God choose? Well, let me back up. Who chose them? God chose them. It wasn't Moses and Aaron saying, oh, you know, those are our brothers, Levites, uh, we'll let them uh, serve in the temple. It happened that uh, uh, in Exodus chapter 32, verse 26, you'll find uh, Moses went up on Mount Sinai to receive the law. When he came down, he found Aaron, his own brother, and the people of Israel took all their gold or much of their gold and made a golden calf to be their god. Moses was furious, and you can't blame him after what he had done, Moses himself, and God had done, more importantly, to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he asked the people of Israel, Moses did, who will stand with me this day as with Yahweh as our God? And the tribe of Levi came directly behind Moses. And not only did they stand with Moses, they picked up their weapons and destroyed 24,000 that day of the idol worshipers, those who were worshiping the golden calves. That's why God chose the Levites, because they were zealous to worship and serve him. And it wasn't because he liked them any better or anything else. It was because of their actions. They stood with the Lord, much like the elect stood with the Lord in the first earth age, much like the elect will stand for the true Jesus Christ in this time when the false one appears as Antichrist. 